I spent over 2000 US dollars flying halfway across the world from South Korea to Germany to uh, see a urologist to have a piece of my scrotum cut off without anesthetic on my head because I have uh, numb genitals. What is up, everyone? It's Roos. I hope everyone is doing well. You guys saw the title. Eric donated a part of his scrotum. I guess the nocebo effect got to him, and he's like, God damn, I have to start getting my scrotum cut out to see what's going wrong because my nocebo effect is taking over 100%, and this is all in my head that I need to cut some of my... <laughs> like, this is insane. Eric, why, why'd you donate your scrotum? What's the PFS network doing as far as donations and fundraising and kind of paint the picture on where the PFS network is as far as fundraising and how the fundraising money actually will attribute to getting real grant money to where fundraise, fundraising money doesn't mean nearly as much. Like why, why'd you donate your scrotum? And like, what's, what's the whole hamster wheel around that as far as the donations for the PFS network? Yeah, well, I mean, clearly those uh, four pills of, of finasteride, you know, turned me completely insane. And I spent over 2000 US dollars flying halfway across the world from South Korea to Germany to uh, see a urologist to have a piece of my scrotum cut off without anesthetic on my head because I have uh, numb genitals. So I didn't it was want already to... it was already numb. Yeah, it was I, like, I, I, don't, I don't need light. OK, and fuck it. I didn't want to I didn't want to make it worse than it already is. So I was like, you know, extreme acute pain or, you know, even more numb genitals. And I, I went for the acute pain. So they cut off, you know, reasonably sized part of my scrotum. And then they, you know, stitched it together as well without any anesthetic. It wasn't exactly a very pleasurable experience. Um, but yeah, good question. You know, why on earth would I do that over a nocebo effect, you know? But uh, in terms of the PFS, network research. We have some really fantastic researchers, including Nadine Hornig, who's a very leading andrologist over at the University of Kiel in Northern Germany. And what they're trying to do is they're investigating the chromatin landscape, essentially. So the leading hypothesis is that there's a problem with our androgen receptors, which would explain why we cannot just pump ourselves full of DHT and testosterone and just go back to normal our cells in our body are not processing those hormones like a normal person. So this study is investigating our tissue, comparing it to healthy controls to understand better on an epigenetic basis, what exactly is going wrong here in terms of the dysfunction. So that's one study that we funded. That was all community money that uh, was responsible for funding that. The second study is with Alfonso Urbanucci. We need approximately 150,000 more euros for that. We've already raised uh, over 200,000 for that, give or take. And that is gonna be investigating a genetic predisposition to try to answer the question, why is it a small minority like me? I took four pills and got completely wrecked with over 30 different symptoms, including you know loss of libido, anhedonia. My wounds don't heal. I scraped my knee over six months ago and the wound is still here on my knee. So why is it some guys like me and, and the other friends of mine here on our program, why are we so badly affected by this where someone can take it for 20 years and have no problems? So we really need to raise money for that. And if you would consider donating so that, you know, we have a chance to get our lives back. I mean, back. the man gave a scrotum, like, come on guys. Like the dude literally voluntarily flew to give his scrotum, right? This isn't a nocebo effect if he's doing all this for like a charity fundraiser, right? No one in here wants to suffer any longer. And my two cents is this is not permanent, but it's at the level where it needs thoroughly investigated at the epigenetic level and then needs thoroughly addressed on that intervention of bumping the epigenetics back to normal, right? And not everyone's going to do crazy fucking like, you know, powder puff curls, chemical X concoctions of drugs to repair themselves. People are suffering around the world with this. And it would be great if they could point the finger at that's it. That's the smoking gun. 
we can come up with the conclusion in a scientific way, right? Not just random guesswork. And it's just overall crazy when you told me that on the phone that I was like, once you told me you donate your scrotum, I'm like, oh, okay, this is definitely going on YouTube. Like nobody else is doing that crazy shit for science. And that's how bad this is. I 100% now that I'm experiencing, like before I'd be like, what? Like I, I'd be in the biohacking cult of like, this dude can't balance his neurosteroids and hormones. Like why is he going and getting a scrotum cut out? Now I can personally say, oh, I completely understand why he's doing that. Like this is 24 seven suffering with basically no relief. And then you always remember what you used to previously feel like. You always remember what you used to previously feel like. Well, what did they say as they were doing it? Like, <laughs> well, they were like, they were shocked that I refused anesthetic. And I, I was like, I tried maca powder and maca powder made my genitals worse. So there's no way in hell you're going to inject. And for the audience, that's a libido booster is maca. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I've used that before completely natty. And like, I was so horny all day. It was like skyrocketed. And now it doesn't yeah. work at all. I have it upstairs. Yeah. Here's a photo with me and the guys who did the procedure. So. What do you see the timeline um, for the PFS cure? Because like, I don't know, I go on the forums and there's a lot of, you know, hopelessness. And it seems like the PFS network is actually pushing really hard. And like you said, you have big money. It's not like these guys are coming on this channel with no money. You already have big money. You guys are making big moves. So I'm not telling you to throw out a specific timeline, but Ever since I got this, I'm averaging like 10 to 20 messages a day on like, what's the deal with this? When am I going to get better? Yeah, I think it's a tough one to answer. I mean, I don't think anyone can answer definitively. But look, we're trying to get it within five years, if that's possible. The way I see it from my perspective is that that's the goal. And if we can just prove, like you said, that this is real, we're going to be eligible for a lot of grant money. We're going to be able to win lawsuits and that's going to expedite the whole process. So in my mind, that's what gets me out of bed in the morning is trying to make that a reality. So. And you definitely are going above and beyond. Like how has the donations been for all of you guys, Blake, Kosh and Mark, like weigh in on trying to get your friends to first off, believe you with this and then let alone like, hey, this can be reversed. My life can be back to normal and that we're the little minority that's actually barking, but it's a big silent minor minority that's, you know, suffering in silence. And the fact that your guys' research could definitely attribute towards PSSD and PAS. They all have very similar symptoms and this could save all the people who, you know, during the the jab era oh they just like ordered some antidepressants and you know when they come off those antidepressants they might be in the same boat as you guys which your research could go and help a multitude of other syndromes that again are being ignored yeah in terms of donations it's been uh at first it was difficult like getting my my father on board but now as time has gone by and, and more research has come out and he's looked into that my, my dad has started donating uh i've been able to get a couple of close friends who, who are very understanding i'm fortunate i have two close friends who donate every month uh to the charity uh, to the charity and uh yeah i mean i would just tell guys that you know people do care like it's not like if you're going to tell a close friend about this, most of them will listen. Like I will say that they're going to listen. And if they're able to help you, they're going to, they're going to try their best. I mean, I've had that experience and I'm sure most, uh, you know, most guys, I really put that effort. That's, that, that's what's going to happen. And, uh, we just got to get out there. I mean, there's our lives are at stake. I mean, we only have one life, right? Like we're going to die eventually and that's it. Like there's no, there's no second chances. So I mean, like the embarrassment of asking a friend just to donate to your charity. I mean, it's really, at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. And uh, I feel like everyone should try to go on to, on YouTube, share their story, because we really we have to like we have to take this seriously. I mean, we can't we can't waste our lives, bro. Like at the end of the day, this this is important, you know. So that's what I would tell everyone, and uh, yeah, like that's been my experience so far with this. But Blake, you already spent sixty thousand, so I'm 
I'm sure you want to see yeah. actual big money get raised for fundraising. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's been it's been a journey, and uh, you know my brother he, he donates every month, but uh, it's tough to get people on board. I'll be honest with you, like it's um, people in the community. You know, a lot of these guys aren't working because of uh, this of the situation that they're in, so they don't have funds. Uh, their parents don't believe them. Um, so that's why we need to, to fund this research uh, and we need outside help. Um, we need a lot of outside help because we have some within the community, but it's not enough. And, uh, you know, I'm donating every month. My brother's donating, but we need we like this. These studies aren't cheap. You know, that's the thing. It's it's, it's going to take money to get out of this. Um, and uh, and we need it. We need to pull it together. So, yeah, it's uh, it's we're going to fight for our lives, honestly. All right, guys, I just wanted to, you know, the scrotum thing is pretty crazy. But after being in this hell, I would say before the hell, I'd be like, what the hell, Eric? But now I'm like, OK, yeah, that that makes sense. This will not just help the finash drive people. I'm sure this research will go on to be cross shared for all the people suffering from PSSD and PAS. I had a lot of guys re reach out to me like, Ryan, I didn't take a 5AR inhibitor, but I took Accutane and took it at 17 for acne and i've been depressed you know since 24. so again same symptoms don't respond to androgens this is obviously on an epigenetic issue i would really like to see this smoking gun revealed like who where where's the fucking root cause of all the cascade of issues because a lot of these issues are just mirroring the fact that androgen signaling isn't working thus the dopamine system is not working so when you have the two major fucking systems not working attributed towards being a male do you want to live in that hell right i don't cut the nuts off my dog my dog's not neutered upstairs and i don't want to be neutered for the rest of my life and i can't even just add in exogenous hormones i could go like i can neuter my dog and start injecting them with tests and he's good but now i can't even do that method so that's why the donations are needed in my opinion i want to see the smoking gun revealed and i want to see all the people with pssd pas and obviously pfs get the help they deserve right the medical community has ignored and i feel like the biohacking community should step up to the plate and it shouldn't just be me so i'll be seeing if anyone else wants to get on board with this but like i said if you if they weren't like put together organized and i didn't feel like there was any light at the end of the tunnel you know i wouldn't even fucking have them on my channel to collect money from you guys but Eric donated a part of his fucking scrotum, and he already gave you the entire game plan and how far they are along. So you can't say, well, what's this going towards? Well, first off, he donated his fucking scrotum on his own money and then gave you the timeline, right? There's going to be, in my opinion, a reversal method. There's no way there's not. Considering that people have spontaneous recoveries randomly and then go back into it, that's telling me that the epigenetics are trying to switch back on, but maybe it's not the right cascading environment because there's so many errors already that's causing that switch. So I'd really like to see this get funded and for me to get out of this hell and back to bodybuilding normally and going back to responding to steroids because they're my favorite drugs. I will see you guys in my next video.